Hi, I'm Andrew Bissell. I'm CEO of Sunamp and also co-founder along with Susan Lang Bissell. Um, we started the company actually quite some time ago uh, after we exited a previous medical imaging software business that we grew in Edinburgh. We, we kind of had a choice at that point. You know, we thought about, is this, is this the moment to retire? Go, go and spend some time on the beach or something. Um, but we, we actually felt pretty strongly that climate change meant that we couldn't just kind of, you know, literally throw the towel down and, you know, and relax uh, because beaches might not be here in 50 years or 100 years. Uh, given the, you know, the rising sea levels coming out of climate change uh, and all the other challenges that go with that. And at the time we were living, we were living down by the beach uh, and we were thinking about what, what does a meter rise in sea level mean? You know, looking at the climate science, looking at, you know, um, at, at all the predictions coming out of the IPCC, they were saying maybe there's a, you know, there's a chance of a 30 to 100 centimetre rise in sea level in this century. And thinking about what that would do to all the people living, including ourselves, right down by the sea, um, it, it really starts to make you think. And then you look into all the other consequences and you go, okay, can't retire yet. You know, there's, a, there's another impactful thing we need to do. And what we decided to, to look at together was energy. But what we, what we didn't understand until we really took a hard look at, you know, at our own lives was actually how much of the final energy consumption in the world is heat. And when we looked into the statistics, we thought about what the, um, the International Energy Agency could tell us, for example, electricity, 18% of global final energy consumption. Heat and cooling, 46% transport 27. So heating and cooling is actually the biggest piece of final energy consumption in the world. But when you think about it, it's actually pretty hard to transition that. It's been slow to transition and it's been quite resistant to change. And if you think about the, the prevailing way of thinking, at least in places like the UK, the Netherlands, Italy, South Korea, many other countries in the world, the prevailing way to heat or provide hot water in a house is the combi boiler. Problem is, it depends on a massive infrastructure of fossil fuels. Um, and of course, it d directly, it directly emits uh, emissions of carbon dioxide, which obviously isn't great for the climate. So we recognize that if we were gonna displace the combi boiler with something better, something driven by renewable energy, something that could work, for example, from electricity from the wind when the wind was blowing, or from PV uh, when the sun is shining, or any time when the grid has low carbon intensity, which nowadays in places like Scotland where sunlight is based is effectively all of the time, um, we probably need to use something like a heat pump. But that means we're going to need a hot water tank, and that brought us back home again to our little Victorian house, which had no cupboards. And, and you know, we were thinking, well, if we have to put in a hot water tank, where's it going to go? And that got us thinking about, you know, a critical missing piece, which is very compact thermal storage. And, and we envisioned a product. Uh, we envisioned a product that was super compact, similar in size to the combi boiler, instead of the great big hot water tank, and would allow all homes, whether they have space or not, to benefit from a heat pump. And that's actually what we've done. So a number of years later, fast forward a decade and a half, here we are, almost effortlessly, uh, with, with the solution. We call it a heat battery, um, and it displaces the need for the hot water tank, fits in broadly the same space as a combi boiler, and enables the heat pump to provide the heating and the hot water for a home. And in the process, we can cut out the burning on demand of fossil energy. We don't have to be drawing gas through that network. Instead, we can align with intermittent, off-peak, renewable energy in the grid, electrical energy. And by that, making that linkage, we can make heat low carbon. So SunAMP is an enabler through the heat battery of both low carbon heating and low carbon hot water 